What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla from All Day ABA and my mission is to make behavior analysis fun and accessible to clients, therapists, and even supervisors. Today we're going to talk about B3 in the 5th edition task list which covers the terms respondent and operant conditioning. Click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to help me grow this channel and to stay up to date on the latest videos. If you haven't watched the other videos for the 5th edition task list yet, feel free to do so after this. In this video, I'm going to teach you the definitions and differences between respondent and operant conditioning. Let's get started. Respondent conditioning is a type of conditioning that pairs together a neutral stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus that produces an unconditioned response. Because of this pairing, the neutral stimulus transforms into a conditioned stimulus over time, which evokes a conditioned response even when the unconditioned stimulus is no longer present. Some popular examples of respondent conditioning would include Pavlov's dogs and the Little Albert experiment. Many of these studies today would be considered highly unethical, especially the Little Albert experiment, and these studies probably would not receive IRB approval if they were presented today. If you want some extra practice, pause this video and read up on either the Little Albert experiment or Pavlov's dogs. Then come back and leave a comment below and describe the initial stimuli and how they transformed. You can also explain what stimuli were paired together and what type of response they produced. Moving on to operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of learning in which the future probability of behaviors are determined by the consequences that follow those behaviors. One example of operant conditioning could be giving out traffic tickets to try to decrease reckless driving. Another example of operant conditioning could be the likes and comments on a person's profile increasing the amount of time that they spend on social media. Before we discuss the major difference between respondent and operant conditioning, I wanted to let you guys know about the upcoming back to school sale that will be happening on Teachers Pay Teachers this upcoming week. On August 4th and 5th, you can use the promo code BTS20 at checkout to get 25% off all the items in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I will put all the information in the description box below along with some shopping suggestions if you'd like to check it out. Now back to our study terms. The major difference between respondent and operant conditioning is that operant conditioning involves behavior contingencies where respondent conditioning does not. Consequences are based on the individual's behavior in operant conditioning. If X behavior occurs, then why consequence will happen as a result. The individual is actively engaged in the operant conditioning process. Respondent conditioning is centered around the effect that stimuli have on behaviors as opposed to consequences. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with others so that they can learn more about applied behavior analysis. Check out the All Day ABA Study Materials Facebook group if you would like to see more of me during your time online. If you are looking for flashcards to study these terms, I have linked my flashcards bundle below. Visit the All Day ABA blog if you would like to read behavior analytic content after watching these videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!